Whoops. Welcome everybody. Today we're going to focus on Keri Waza. Keri means kicking and Waza technique. So I'm going to go systematically through the various syllabi and we're going to do the various kicks and at the end for the black belts I will do something fun that you can try at home by yourself. So if you remember when we are white belts and yellow belts and orange belts and even the lower belts we always start off with maigiri so in the lower belt ranks we start with a maigiri in a kamai position with our arms to the side this is to make sure that when you learn how to kick especially maigiri that your hips are in a position where it faces forward and that is precisely where we have our hands to the side like this so we want to try and prevent from when you kick to have your arms in this position because then you'll know that you have the hips in the incorrect position so let's do the first one so when we start off we go forward into a maigiri kamai position so from here kamai and then from here with our arms to the side we do a maigiri kick so keeping your hips facing forward hitch knee and some and so forth for the basic maigiri application in the next syllabus we then do the maigiri but we follow it up with nidangiri for the little ones we also try and kick nidangiri for the precise same reason of keeping your hips forward by holding the arms to the side so we'll kick nidangiri from here nidan meaning two level kick meaning chudan and jordan the snapback is the important part so i want you to focus on the snapback so snapback and then step and then the jordan with the snapback so make sure the two level kick remember this whole area is chudan but if you kick the first kick too high the chudan difference between the next one which will be jordan will be too small so just kick the chudan at normal belt height level this will allow you easily when you kick the jordan to be able to lift your knee and to kick the jordan kick so therefore big difference between the chudan and the jordan especially for grading purposes when we go further into the syllabus or for the more medium range belt levels we then do the nidangiri but from a fighting position because you have now learned that not to overturn the hips when you kick so therefore arms up in this position very natural and very calmly you keep your hands in this position all about the lower body so switch and switch keep your hips in the same level nidangiri chudan and joda then we do when we get to the green and blue belt levels we'll do a single mawashi giri please remember and it's important to lift your leg on the side the knee position and when you go around in kihon make sure that when you do it for grading that you kick with the ball of the foot make sure of the center line arms up lift the leg by the side snap back and land you do not have to kick mawashi giri especially for grading jordan level you can kick it chudan level the important bit is to make sure that your toes are in the down position then for the next levels next keri waza we do a nidangiri especially for the brown belt levels but then what we do is we kick it with a front foot first that is much more difficult because you want to try and keep your head in a still position not to lean back when you kick and that one we kick from here nidangiri front foot and then the back foot so kicking and kicking so nidangiri front foot chudan back foot jordan like this then for the shodan syllabus we do the variations my giri opposite leg mawashi giri my giri same leg mawashi giri all of those different combinations what the examiner wants to test you on when you do those is obviously that the technique is 100 correct the kicking technique but also the knee so whenever you do kicking maigiri mawashi giri for example with the same leg it's to test you not after the maigiri to drop the knee before you do the mawashi giri 
So to make sure this knee stays on the same spot and then the mawashigiri or from here the kikomigiri. So the knee position are always crucial whenever you kick. From the white belt syllabus all the way through every single belt syllabus you will do kiyagi and kikomigiri. Like I've explained in a previous video, the kiyagi to make sure that your knee lifts towards the target. My sensei taught me, he says, think of a thorn under your foot. And then when you kick, you must get rid of the thorn under the foot. See, oh, the thorn is gone, and then you can step forward. So for the little ones, see if you can get rid of the thorn by kicking forward. The kikomigiri starts in the same position, but the knee is different. So like I've explained before, think of a maigiri, but in this case, kicking kikomigiri. Because the knee lift for maigiri and kikomigiri looks the same. It's just a different kick in a different direction. So for the kikomigiri, the knee lifts like this. Think of the heel, the snapback, and then the landing foot. In the more advanced kicking, um, especially when it comes to kata, we kick Mikazuki Giri. Mikazuki Giri, I will do it towards the camera. In a lot of kata, you have where you have to kick your hand. A lot of students make the mistake and think it's a round kick. It's not. It comes straight up and then it makes contact. But the important part is to not move this hand. So you can't kick the foot to the hand in this position. You have to stay down the center line, make sure this comes up in this position, kicking the hand, and then the elbow strike that follows. Remember Mikazuki Kiri in this position. For the final bit, uh, one or two kicks that's not for, uh, does not form part of the syllabus, but like I say, things that you can practice for a little bit of fun. The one, however, that is in the syllabus is Ushuru Kiri for the black belt short and grading. And it's very important to make sure that your knee lines up with the center line of the target. You're going to turn and look over your shoulder. Be very careful not to overturn your hips because then it becomes a side kick. You have to try and kick with the heel and your foot position must be in a downward position like this. So when you turn, turn your body, look over your right shoulder. Again, think of a maigiri because the knee lifts up in the front here as if you're going to kick a maigiri. It comes through, you're going to snap it back and then landing forward. Kicking with the heel in that position. Two kicks I want to show you. You can practice them by yourself. Like I said, they don't form part of the syllabus. Uh, I'll do it towards the camera. The first one is Ura Mawashigiri. Ura meaning on the inside. Lifting your leg up like this maybe 30 degrees off the center line, extend the foot and then the hook so the foot comes around like this. That one, Ura Mawashigiri. And then the last one, Ushuru Mawashigiri. Ushuru meaning back, like in the back kick. So you're going to turn your body all the way around. Again, think of 30 degrees off the center line for the, hook of the, the foot to come around and then for it to hook towards the target. So from here, Lifting up, kicking, and landing. You can practice that one a bit by yourself. Those are the basic carry waza techniques, uh, kicking techniques that forms part of the syllabus. Make sure that you practice your kicks a lot. Kicking makes part of a big portion of your grading. If you think short on grading of everything that you have to do in that syllabus, I would say the majority of the things that you have to do is kicking. Go and have a look and you'll see a lot of it is about kicking. Please practice your kicks a lot. To kick best, I always say you have to kick lots. Have fun and kick a lot. Bus.